I've been using the base model M2 Pro Mac Mini for a few weeks now and, well, it's made me rethink quite a lot of things. Apple really has surprised a lot of us tech reviewers this year. I, for one, wasn't expecting new chips, new Macs, and the resurrection of the OG HomePod right at the start of 2023. And I'm going to level with you guys, it's quite fraught covering all this stuff. However, that's one reason I'm taking my time with the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I want to get to know this computer deeply. I've got loads of exciting stuff planned for this, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell not to miss those videos. But in the meantime, my first month of using this has been an absolute revelation. Before we get started, just a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Trend Micro and their fantastic premium security suite. If you're looking for a complete one-stop solution to identity and device protection for your home, this could be your knight in shining armor. It includes a VPN, a password manager, mobile security, ID security, protection against ransomware, I'm now running out of fingers, protection against email scamming, and loads more stuff. It works across Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Chromebooks, and that means your entire family can get involved no matter which device they're using. You even get 24 seven human support, which is so rare these days. And the thing that I really love about Premium Security Suite is that they haven't cut any corners. Every single one of those apps that I just mentioned is top-notch stuff. For instance, I'm a really big fan of their VPN, which I use all of the time in my favorite coffee shop down the road, just to be sure that no one can get into my laptop or into the data and nick my stuff. So if like me, you're in a coffee shop and you wanna be sure that your data is safe, or you just want to protect your kids from from the dark web on their devices, Premium Security Suite is a bit of a no-brainer. I've partnered with Trend Micro for a long time now because I love their stuff. It's as simple as that. To check out Premium Security Suite for yourself, click the link in the description. As mentioned, I've got loads planned for this M2 Pro Mac Mini. At the moment, it's sitting over there on the desk that used to house my M1 Mac Mini, the one that I built this business with. And as I mentioned last year, I promise I'll be doing a giveaway for that machine fairly soon. The other thing that I'll be doing with this is placing it at the heart of my mini music production studio, which I've talked about quite a bit, I know, and haven't done anything with yet. I promise that's on the way. However, in the meantime, I have been putting this to good use. Basically, I've been using this to edit these videos. So the video that you're watching now, the video that you may have watched last week and you know a few days before that have all been edited on this base model M2 Pro Mac Mini. And what is really interesting is that my original idea with this was to only install Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro with the idea that in doing that I wouldn't get distracted by Slack, email, to-do lists, all of that stuff. Well, I came into the studio a couple of days ago and installed everything. So I installed Slack, Fantastical, email, the whole lot basically. So this has become a normal Mac for me. And conversely, the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has been my production workhorse since October 2021, is spending more time at home. There is just one question that you've probably got about this M2 Pro Mac Mini, which is rolling around your head. It has certainly been rolling around the comment sections of my previous videos about this. And that is whether or not there are still Bluetooth issues with this Mac Mini. Now, if you weren't aware, the M1 Mac Mini, and arguably, I think, the generation before that, had terrible Bluetooth problems. It got to the stage in my old studio where I couldn't wear a pair of Bluetooth headphones or even use certain Bluetooth peripherals, including Apple's own, like the Magic Keyboard and Magic Trackpad, with that Mac Mini. It became almost a deal breaker. And I know for a lot of you, it was a deal breaker. So it's a fair question. Is the M2 and the M2 Pro Mac Mini devoid of Bluetooth problems? Cross all your fingers, please, because I've not had any issues with this in the first month that I've been using it. I would urge caution with that though, because it is the same chassis. It, this hasn't changed. It's looked like this for years and years, and most people believe that that was the, the main problem with these Bluetooth issues. Don't take my word for it, and I'll keep you updated, but the first signs are pretty good. 
So what do I love about the M2 Pro Mac Mini? Well, the first thing is what I've always loved about the Mac Mini. It's the fact that it is this tiny, weirdly handsome little computer that doesn't look like a computer. It's fairly innocuous. You can slip it into any desk space, pretty much. You can rack mount them as well if you want. And the power that you get per pound or per dollar is just amazing. It's also the best and I think the most cost-effective way into macOS, which is a, a fantastic thing. The base model M, no, standard M2 Mac Mini is cheaper this time around, so it's even more cost-effective to get into Macs if you don't have a huge budget. I also love the fact that single core performance on these M-based Mac Minis is just a given. It's buttery smooth straight out of the box, and if my experience with the M1 Mac Mini is anything to go by, and also my M1 MacBook Air, that performance lasts for a very long time. But with the M2 Pro Mac Mini, it's when you step beyond that everyday stuff that it gets really interesting. I did a very basic Final Cut Pro render test between this M2 Pro Mac Mini, the base model, and my £3,700 MacBook Pro, and this beat it in that render. But what's really impressive about this thing is when I edit my 4K videos for this YouTube channel, it doesn't really feel any different to that MacBook Pro. In fact, all I've noticed is a couple of dropped frame messages. I even get those occasionally on the MacBook Pro. I also love the fact that it's got four Thunderbolt ports on the back. I didn't realize quite how useful that would be, but the ability to connect multiple SSDs to it, along with my Satechi hub, a link in the description to that, by the way, I've just resurrected that on the desk, and it's such a useful addition. But yeah, the ability to connect all of that stuff to the back of the Mac Mini without loads of hubs is a, it's just fantastic. So with all of that performance for the price and that connectivity, the M2 Pro Mac Mini is really making me think twice about how much I'll spend on my next MacBook Pro. There are a few things that I don't like about the M2 Pro Mac Mini, and we'll start with the SSD issue, which is now completely unavoidable. And if you weren't aware, although you probably are by now, Apple has changed the configuration of its base model SSD storage. So if you buy the base model M2 Pro Mac Mini, you'll get the 512 gig SSD. That's all well and good, but because of those changes that Apple has made, your 512 gig SSD will be slower than the previous version. I have witnessed this firsthand, so I did a test between the M1 Mac Mini and the M2 Mac Mini, and the M2 Mac Mini in my export test from Final Cut Pro was slower than the M1 version. In everyday use, you're probably not going to notice that, and I used to be of the opinion that, for that reason, it doesn't matter. I've changed my mind with this, because the more money you keep spending on these devices, the more it becomes really irksome that Apple is purposefully slowing them down. Now this M2 Pro Mac Mini did the export test 15 seconds quicker than the M1 Mac Mini, which is quicker, fine, but it's not quick enough because this is an M2 Pro. The M1 version was a standard M1 version, so to only gain 15 seconds from one generation to this generation, isn't good enough. The other thing that I'm a bit annoyed about is the fact that we don't get an SD card slot on this. I'd love one on the front. I'd love a Mac Studio style SD card slot here, please. But the fact we didn't get one on the back either just doesn't make sense. This is a pro-focused machine. And while I'm having a rant, can we just talk briefly about the internal speaker in the Mac Mini? Bearing in mind that the Apple audio team are very good these days at making small things sound much bigger than they are, the iPhone, the iPad, to a degree, the HomePod Mini. Why on earth is the Mac Mini still powered by a walkie-talkie speaker? Honestly, when you first boot this up and hear that macOS startup chime, it's just, oh, it's horrible. I think the £1,399 that I spent on this M2 Pro Mac Mini was a fantastic investment for this business. And as mentioned earlier, I think it has probably saved me money buying another really expensive, specced up MacBook Pro either later this year or next year. So should you buy one? Absolutely. I'd buy the base model as well, like this one. If that's all you can afford, it's still one hell of a computer that will last you many, many years. If you do have a bit more budget, I wouldn't worry too much about unified memory. I think 16 gig in this is fine for most applications, unless you know you need more than that, obviously. But if you do have a bit more budget, spend a bit more on the SSD, because if that read-write thing bothers you, if you don't like the idea of buying a Mac that is a bit slower 
in one regard than the previous generation, then get rid of that buyer's remorse and just get up, go, basically go up to the one terabyte. That gets rid of that issue. I will be checking in with more content on the M2 Pro Mac Mini over the next few months as it continues to play a big role in this business. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. But in the meantime, if you want to see how the M2, well, the spec'd up M2 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro fared in my Final Cut Pro test. Keep watching for a link to that video because the results were, they were fascinating.